Where did all of this begin for you? Well, as you said at the beginning, I am a journalist, and uh, the sort of thing I do, which is called participatory journalism, has been done by um, others. I think the most famous, a fellow called Paul Gallico, who was a great uh, sports journalist in the so-called golden age of sport, and he felt that if you were going to write about sports, you really ought to learn about athletic skills at their very highest, and he um, boxed against Jack Dempsey, and he caught uh, Herb Pennock's curveball. He was a great Boston Red Sox uh, uh, pitcher. He uh, played tennis against uh, Bill Johnson, who was Did he Turtle. give you the idea for this? Well, he wrote a book called Farewell to Sport, uh, in which there is a chapter in there about these adventures of his. Uh, he then went on to become a very popular novelist, The Poseidon Adventure, and so forth. And I read this when I started working for Sports Illustrated, and uh, wondered if this couldn't be extended a bit, find out not only about uh, athletic skills, but something about the uh, society of um, teams. You've taken it one step farther, though. You've not just done sports. I mean, you've conducted Philharmonic orchestras, and as I said, photographed Playboy centerfolds. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> that was very difficult, actually. You know, they have a camera called a Deodorf, in which you have to, for Mr. Hefner likes this sort of tones that that camera gets. It's an old portrait camera, and everything in it is upside down. It has no mirrors in there, so that when you look through it, the image that you have, mine was a girl standing in a field who's just gotten off a horse. And when you look through the camera, that is <laughs> reversed, and it's not quite as sensual as you might think. No, I'll bet it isn't. <laughs> uh, that's true. That makes me, makes me look at these photographers a bit differently. <laughs> when you wrote uh, Paper Lion after playing with the Detroit Lions, did you write in there that they soft-pedaled their game for you when you kind of came on board, or did they actually continue their hard-hitting approach to the game? Oh, I think so. I think there's only one degree that they, that uh, when they, when they whistle blows, that they just turn on, and there's no, also it's rather dangerous to relax and to soft pedal. So I think I got a pretty good taste of what it is really like. Have you ever been hurt? Yeah, I had, of course, a lot of psychic uh, damage. I'll bet. <laughs> I'll bet. Uh, yes, I had, I broke a, or fractured a thumb playing with the Baltimore Colts, and I got, uh, I uh, butted heads playing with the Boston Celtics and got a great uh, uh, temporary scar there from that. Uh, oh, sure, you can get uh, damaged a little bit doing the sort of thing I do. Um, it, it, do you enjoy what you do? Well, after it's over, I, I think that, uh, you see, I, it, it's, I'm absolutely bound to suffer humiliation because there's no way that the average amateur can succeed in this very high-level world of the professional athlete or artist. And so... Um, Humiliation is assured, and, and my only hope is that something has happened during that humiliation, which is either funny or informative, so that I, in, I can recollect in tranquility, as Mr. Wordsworth said, and write about the, uh, the humor of it. Well, I, uh, we do not wish to subject you to humiliation this morning, George, <laughs> but sure. undoubtedly, knowing this crew, it'll happen. I want you to come with me. George uh -oh. Plimpton. Where are you taking has, me? Uh, I want you to meet someone who's going to teach you the fine art of running a camera. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Well. His name is Wayne Smith, and he is a delightful man. He has a wonderful last name. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne is running camera six. Wayne, meet George Plimpton and give him a little lesson so that he can take over your job this morning. Would Wayne, you do that? how are you? Good morning. And I'm going to be the subject. So you two go on ahead. <laughs> I present to you camera six. Uh, it's been running very well this morning, so it obviously slept well last uh -huh. night. <laughs> There'll be a few things the director will be calling for as you run camera. There'll be the, the ped up or the ped down. He's going to tell me that, is he? Yes, he'll be telling you that over the headsets, which uh -huh. I'm wearing right now, but I'll give to you soon. We have uh, a pan, which is a left to right movement, showing Eileen there. And the tilt up and tilt down, <laughs> which is this movement. And you'll also be asked to zoom in for some tight shots, which will be on this lever right here. On, Not too tight, please. On, <laughs> on the right side of the camera, so you'll zoom right into her. And with well, that, uh, on the left side, you'll have to focus and bring her into focus by this little... Uh, uh, hand lever here. Al said he liked me better the other way, Wayne. And the <laughs> shot composition will be something like this that you'll see here in the viewfinder uh, that the director usually likes, which is from the chest to the top of the head and a little bit of headroom at the top. You don't want to shoot her so that you have the top of her head cut off and, and you don't want to, of course, have her chin <laughs> at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to be humiliated, and so is everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow evening at Dartmouth College, 23 world renowned chefs. <laughs> George, you're doing me a great service. George Plimpton is on camera six, as you probably tell. You're supposed to be over here, George. This, this way, George. Okay. We're going this way, okay? All right. All right, well, George gets over here. I want you to meet Michael Foley from Foley's in Chicago. How you All doing, right. Michael? Nice to see you. Welcome to our part of the woods. Thank you. That's great. Okay, you're a good sport, too, to allow us to play a, a little joke here with George. I think it's great. George?
Again, on the other side yeah. of Michael. Sorry, Michael. Sure. Okay. Yeah. That, well, that's, that's George's rehearsed this. <laughs> no, he hasn't. All right, George, you're in a good position now, okay? What are you making? We're going to do some quail with Riesling. What's and, Riesling? Uh, oh, Riesling wine. I brought some Riesling. Actually, this is one of the wineries that's better known in Michigan. It's new. Is it? And it's uh, doing some things with Riesling you'll see in world-class wine, I think, in two and three years from now. Michigan has always been a, pretty much a wine-producing state, but not a huge... Yeah, I think ever since California stole the, the road with all their marketing, they've done a, a great thing. But Riesling will come up, and I think that this particular winery will also do some Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Great. Now, quail. Is it hard to find quail? This is a rough town. You know, I brought quail into the city, and they're all talking about cooking quail, and I'm talking about my quail with vine leaves, and everyone else is talking about other things in politics. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but is it hard to find quail? Can you get it at most better, yeah, better I think grocery stores? A lot, of the, a lot of the grocery stores you can get it at. Now. Okay, is it seasonal? Seasonal. So right. it's now. It is it's now. now. All right, what do we do first? All right, well, we're going to roast it with a little bit of vine leaf and a little bit of pork fat. Now, so, what is a vine leaf? This is a vine leaf from one of the Riesling uh, vines, and I've soaked it in a little bit of water and then boiled it for a second. We're going to take the quail and wrap it into the vine leaf with a little bit of pork fat to keep it moist. Okay, how hard so, is it to find the vine leaves if you wanted to make this yourself? If you can, you can just use the pork fat, it's easy to oh, find. Oh, okay, great, all right, so. So what we're gonna start with is a very hot pan and we're gonna sear the quail off, a little bit of olive oil and butter. Okay, uh, <laughs> George, how you doing over there, George, okay? Uh, you just had a very um, soft focus shot on your pan. <laughs> okay, a little butter. Just a little butter, a little olive oil. Always mix the butter and oil because it doesn't splatter, right? Yeah, it uh, gives a good flavor too yeah. with the olive oil and the butter. So we're going to start with one of the quails that we pre-wrapped. Start okay. it on its side. Sear it. All the sides. And then we're going to add some of the quail we browned a little bit here. Okay. We're going to brown all the sides. Okay. One of the nice things about the dish is the vine leaf plus the grapes that we're going to add at the end. There's been a stuffing made, and in the stuffing we use a little bit of the liver from the quail. Okay. We use some bread that was soaked in some milk. Right. And then a small bit of allspice. Okay. Very good, George. <laughs> allspice, the bread you soaked in the... In the what? bread with a little bit of milk. Okay. The and liver. liver. We chopped it all together and stuffed it into the Ooh, stomach of the quail yum. and then wrapped it with the vine leaf. Yeah. Now you have, these, while this is cooking, explain mm -hmm. to, we go, after you turn it, we go over to the garnish or whatever you've got over here. All right. Salt it now. A little seasoning. Salt, pepper. Not too much because the vine leaves are kind of salty as it is. They've got a lot of flavor. And uh, we're going to add to it to finish the sauce. Some of the grape leaves from, the, from uh, Riesling grapes. Grape grapes themselves. Are those just ordinary white grapes? These are from Riesling. Well, and, uh, I are they different? Yeah. Just different grapes? Yeah. I took the seeds out and everything for you. Oh, they're sweeter. Right. But, you know, uh, you need a lot of sugar to start a fermentation. So we picked these grapes somewhere around 20, 21 uh, bricks. And uh, then we're going to finish with the Riesling. Wait a minute, explain that. You picked these grapes what? Somewhere around 21 degrees sugar. So oh. that it starts the fermentation oh. of the wine. Oh, terrific. Okay. And then we're going to add a little bit of the wine itself. Right. And then finish it with some butter. Okay, so it's the grapes, and what is this, a stock? Grapes, stock from the quail, a little bit of Riesling, and a little bit of butter. Very simple. I'm going to turn that quail for a second. Now, what else is being featured tomorrow night? Who, who, do you have any friends that are cooking oh, with yeah. you? Oh, yeah. There's, a, there's a, so many people, in the, and the styles of food will range everything from Tex-Mex all the way through um, things from the Southwest. And That's great, California. isn't it? That's terrific. Um, What's Foley's in Chicago like, your restaurant? Oh, it's, well, we do everything from meat, fish, poultry, pastas. Uh, we have another restaurant, Printer's Row. But uh, Jasper White's coming from from here, from Boston. Oh, terrific. Yeah. I know, of course, he's got a great restaurant. That's right. a wonderful place. All right, George, how are you doing over there? Um, great fun. Can I, let me just, can I just show you, can you get a shot here of the pan? <laughs> good, George. Yeah. <laughs> how are you doing? Are you having a good time? Terrific fun. <laughs> okay, right. George, off the shot now. That's good. There we go. All right. <laughs> okay, George, don't get carried away. <laughs> That's Mark, our director, who's in his ear over there. You're a good okay. sport to let us do this. Oh, no, no. Oh, can we taste? Let's, let's, let's finish the dish. All right. right? Finish gonna, the dish. We're going to take the quail out. Right. To make the gravy. Right. Throw the, the fat in the pan. Sauce. Oh, throw the, the fat, fat in there. In okay. Watch your face for a second. Right? We're going to put some of the grapes in. Okay. A little bit of wine. All we need to do is cook off the alcohol. Nothing more than that. A little bit of stock. You can smell the Riesling. What you're doing is you're really doing a reduction here, aren't you? That's all it is. Yeah. And okay. we, we don't want it to be too heavy. So we'll let that cook down for a second, and then we'll trim the quail. Okay. When you say trim, you mean cut off the cord? You had to we're, tie we're it? We're not going to serve the vine leaf. We're not going to serve the string. 
and we're not going to serve the pork fat. I think that's a good idea, Michael. So these are some of the things you'll see tomorrow night, but uh, everybody's very enthusiastic about the whole event. Now, are you serving a course by course, or is this no, kind it's of a, around the room you go and taste? Yes, it is. You just okay. go around and taste. Great. Um, we're going to trim the legs off. Okay. Yes, little quail. Now, this Sorry. guy doesn't look like he's quite done. He's the last not, one we put in here, right? Not quite finished. All right, he's not the one I'm going to taste. Do you mind? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather taste the one that's cooked. All right. So maybe I can just reach in there and grab a little piece. Let me piece. give you another one. All right. But look at how pretty he is. Is that a, a girl or a boy quail? Uh, I didn't check before we started. Uh, th there is a difference. Though, the, right? <laughs> there has to be a difference. There have been intense studies done on intense what the flavor studies. is between the male and the female quail. I know you're joking. Are you joking? Oh, absolutely. Joking. <laughs> How are we doing, George? Fine. You, got... you all right there? Yep, a lot of steam. See if you can get the steam out of there. Well, all right. <laughs> we'll, we'll remove the steam right away. Oh, we were putting a little leg in there to taste? I'm going to put a little leg in here so you can taste it. All right, that. well, while we're waiting to get to taste, let me, let me do this, okay? George, now hold on a second. George, I just want to make sure we get a tight shot here of the food, okay? How, how are you doing? Can you do that? There. Oh, George. Very good, George. That's what you have to do. You have to do a Sumner Shane move where you follow. <laughs> <laughs> That's an in-joke. <laughs> okay. Now, while this so? is going, George, let's get you off the hook and have you come up here. Can we do that? George, what? where are you? You can give the camera back to Wayne. George is glued right. to the camera. Well, I'll take much. the headsets. <laughs> and come up go. here. Now, how do you feel you did? Rate yourself. Well, I'd give myself about a C minus. A C minus? <laughs> Me, I'm Michael of, Foley. A lot of trouble with the steam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't see the steam. George Plimpton. Do we have an instant replay of what George was up to behind that camera? Mark, here we go. Instant replay, George. Watch your work. Well, that's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think I spent, look at that. Look, it right not, this. You did very well there. Yeah. You d <laughs> yeah. So is this the next career, well, cameraman? Yeah. How much do you get paid for doing Camera that? Camera person, I should say. Oh, they can make more money than anybody else in the station. Are you <laughs> kidding? <laughs>